A-level business theories, Cotter and Schlesinger's resistors of change. John Cotter, professor of leadership at Harvard Business School, and Leonard Schlesinger, an American economist also at Harvard Business School, worked together to build up their theory of the four main reasons why individuals within firms resist change. Their theory dovetails well with Kurt Lewin's force field analysis. One factor that Cotter and Schlesinger considered was that of self-interest, parochial self-interest. This is where individuals in an organization focus on their own needs and interests rather than those of the firm. In fact, any change they perceive in terms of how much of a threat it might be on their own particular circumstance. Change is a personal threat with regards to status, position and power in the organization. These individuals prefer decision making to benefit them and resist anything from which they do not personally benefit. Such employees are prone to feel that the business world very much revolves around them. A second reason why there might be resistance is inertia, preference for the status quo. Individuals are used to a certain way of working. This is the way we do things around here. And they don't like that to be challenged. They like routine. Perhaps they've worked in an organisation with a very conservative culture who are risk averse and lack any level of innovation. It could be for these individuals that this is actually a reaction to a previous change that's perceived as negative or very poorly carried out. As such, these employees effectively have turned to stone and feel immovable. This resisting force is often present whenever a strategic drift happens in an organisation. A third factor that Cotter and Schlesinger identified was the fact that potentially individuals have a different assessment of the situation. Either they don't agree that the change is needed or believe that the change that's being proposed is not the most effective or perhaps there's better ways to actually achieve this. It may be the fact they weren't including the original decision making and may resent this. It may even be the fact they feel better placed and so rebel against this perceived poor decision that they were not part of. Maybe they don't think the change will be effective, perhaps they even think it's a bad decision that will cause more harm than good. Ultimately they'll miss the wrong. Whatever has been proposed is not the correct solution. The final of the four reasons they identified was to do with communication and that's in terms of misunderstanding by employees or miscommunication. Possibly the employee did not realise the need for change due to a lack of understanding or communication. They've been painted a picture the organisation may be performing much better than it actually is and therefore do not see why this change is needed. Potentially they may also be resistant to change as their own knowledge base may be inaccurate. They've been led to believe one thing which in fact is not correct. Therefore would be misleading with respect to the true position of the firm. Therefore this level of misunderstanding, miscommunication means they resist the change because they do not see it as being necessary. It's very much a case in this circumstance of the information available being that fake news. Ultimately these four resisting forces may be present to different degrees depending on the culture and leadership embedded in an organisation. There may be all four, there may be just one and it will be dependent very much on the backstory of the organisation itself. Each one will need to be addressed in a different way in order to facilitate the change and for the company to move forward. So, that's Cotter and Schlesinger's four resisting factors with regard to change.